what I will do is first, you know, uh, if everybody has come, Sang everybody has come. Very difficult to find out. Quite discussion on harmony in family. So let us see if there is any specific question. You can take it up by five minutes. I have a uh, few questions. Uh, three four questions, but I think the answer will come within one minute. <laughs> I have been uh, pondering over the last uh, four uh, days uh, uh, input and my own thoughts. Question number one, uh, if all my desires, thoughts, opinions are origina originating mainly from preconditioning, sensation, and to a little fraction of it, also from natural sense of my present life experiences, then it seems to me that I am not what I am. What? Who should I be? One. Then from there, partially answer to myself perhaps. <coughs> if being in a state or a situation of bliss or harmony or happiness is one's true self, and if the self is being continuous in time and requires no physical facilities, then do I conclude that self is all knowing? Continuous or eternal consciousness. Question number three: If self need to or if self need to coexist with the body, do I conclude that self will need will and need to manifest in the body of certain transient living things on continuous basis, changing forms on ongoing basis? If this is so. Then all living things, such as animals, insects, etc., are basically certain certain cells existing and manifesting in that particular body at this particular point of time and have the potential to manifest in in so-called human being. Then I have a fourth uh, question. All the feelings of human beings are abstract concepts devoid of any value. Seem to be designed by human for better coexistence in harmony only. Finally, this program is so logical and universal in nature. Who, why, and when was it initiated? Thank you. <coughs> this issue of uh, this real self and the deluded self. is something what we have been trying to discuss right from the first day. So, this, uh, you know, if you have, you, I mean, have already started investigating into it and it turns out that majority of our desire, thought and expectation are not based on our own natural acceptance. We have been also able to see that this natural acceptance is something which is innate in us, you know, intact in us, it is invariant in us and it is universal. So these two things we are able to observe now, about, you know, in each one of oneself. So with this observation we can now you know, make some conclusion that most of the time, this is decided by either this or this. And in that sense, you are not sure whether it is in accordance with the natural acceptance or not in accordance with the natural acceptance. <laughs> so, that is the meaning of being deluded. Right? And 
thinking of about myself as something which is not what I really want to be. Something which is not my natural acceptance. And that is what is creating problem. So all my unhappiness has to do with this. That is, I have done so many things inside me or so many things have been done inside me without my being aware of whether it is worth for me, it is not worth for me. <coughs> so, it has been done by the parents, by the teachers, by the society, by the advertisements, all such things. And I am mostly not even aware of it. <coughs> so now, we have started paying attention to ourselves, you know, started looking into ourselves. <coughs> and we have found that, yes, a major part of what is there and what we thought is the self, right, is something which has been dumped into us without our being aware of whether it is really what I want to be or, you know, something other than this. Or even in contradiction with what I really want to be or what is actually acceptable to me. So this is the meaning of deluded self. Or, I have created an image of myself which is not correct. And I said, if you operate with this, <coughs> your life goes like this. So either you tend to over-evaluate yourself or you tend to under-evaluate yourself. Right? And you keep on fluctuating. So this over-evaluation is what is called ego. Under evaluation is what is called depression. So when we are talking about the self, we are trying to investigate into the self and find out what is the real nature of the self. Right. So when we say self or I, it does not mean ego. This ego is a byproduct of my not being aware of myself. So if I understand my real self, then self-confidence. But if I don't have the, you know, right evaluation of this self, if I don't understand the real self, then it will either tend to over-evaluate or under-evaluate. So this over-evaluation of the self, without knowing the self, right, is ego. This under-evaluation of the self, without knowing the self, is depression. And if you look at your, you know, state of being, most of the time, you keep fluctuating between this ego and the depression. So that is what keeps happening. So what we are saying is that we need to understand ourselves. We need to understand our nature, the real nature of the self. So, if you do that, then it turns out that you have this thing called natural acceptance, which is there in you, which is intact, which is innate, which is invariant, right? and you can access to it. It is possible for us to access this natural acceptance, understand, you know, look into this natural acceptance, <coughs> and find it out for ourselves. <coughs> that is what we are doing. Last three, four days, what we have tried to do is to start accessing to this natural acceptance. Not that we are creating this natural acceptance. <coughs> it is there in us, it is intact, it is net, it is invariant, and finally, which is universal. So, if we start accessing that, okay. Then we are accessing, you know, are trying to understand our real self. <coughs> so this is one thing which we need to do. Then once we have understood this, <coughs> you know, our natural acceptance, <coughs> then if my desire, thought and expectations are falling in line with this natural acceptance, right, then I am in a state of harmony with it. And that was the meaning of the word which we said very first day 
what I am and what I really want to be. This is what I am. Because I am operating with this set of desire, thought and expectation. This is what I really want to be. My natural acceptance. Now whether there is a harmony between the two or contradiction between the two. That essentially the issue, right? If there is a harmony between the two, I am in a state of happiness. If there is a contradiction between the two, I am in a state of unhappiness. Essentially, what it would mean, this happiness and unhappiness, is an indicator of the fact as to whether I am in harmony with him or I am in contradiction with him. That is, whether my desire, thought and expectations are in line with my natural acceptance or they are in contradiction with my natural acceptance. So this happiness, unhappiness is an indicator of my state of being. It is an indicator as to whether this desire, thought and expectations are in line with my natural acceptance or it is in contradiction with my natural acceptance which is dubbed into me through preconditioning or through sensation. That is why it was called Patantrata. Somebody else is dictating. Somebody else is deciding for me. I am not deciding for myself. So that is the meaning of deliberate self. I am in delusion. Right? I am in ignorance, I am not aware of myself, I am not aware of what is my natural acceptance. <coughs> so all this is creating, you know, problem for me, creating unhappiness for me. So all that I need to do is to access my natural acceptance and what I am trying, we are trying to do is essentially trying to access it, trying to work out what this natural acceptance is for each one of us by way of putting forward this proposal and asking it to verify. Once we do it, then we have to make sure that all our desires, thoughts and expectations do fall in line with it. And if it is not falling in line with it, then it must be evaluated and it must slowly die out. So, then you can see that the real self would mean that I have this natural acceptance which is there in me and I am aware of it and this natural acceptance is guiding my desire, thought and expectation. If this is the case, then I am in harmony with it, then I am in a state of happiness. So if I can make sure that all my desire, thought and expectations are falling in line with this natural acceptance, I can be sure that if there is a continuity of happiness within me. And you can see, you don't have to, you know, kind of get anything from outside okay, <coughs> for ensuring this except the knowledge, except the proposal of right understanding. That is all that you need from outside. And that is why we said the most important thing for human being is the education and sanskar. So that is all that you need to make yourself in harmony, make <coughs> yourself you know, to be in a state of happiness. And if you are in a state of happiness, then something will come out of you. <coughs> what will come out of you? The behavior with human being, a mutually fulfilling <coughs> behavior with human being. Right? And mutually enriching work with the rest of nature. So that is a natural outcome of your, you being in a state of your real self. So you will be in a state of happiness by way of being your real self. And you will be able to see the relationship with other human beings and with the rest of nature. And therefore you will be ensuring mutual happiness in your relationship with human beings and mutual prosperity, mutual enrichment in your relationship with the rest of us. So this will be the natural outcome of you being in a state of 
husband in a state of happiness. So what we are trying to do now, you know, from first day is trying to unfold what are these you know, natural acceptance in each one of us. Right. And that is what we are doing when we are saying we are trying to uh, explore into the harmony in individual. We are trying to explore into harmony in family, harmony in society, harmony in nature and So when we do all this, right, we would understand what all these harmony are at different levels of our existence. And that will give us a list of my natural acceptance. If I have those understanding, right, of harmony, then that is what is going to be placed at one and two, which will do when we talk about harmony in nature, harmony in existence, right? Then we will fill up this one and two in terms of the realization, in terms of the understanding. So, what is our natural acceptance? Is what we are trying to explore, and at the end of this exploration, then we can. Finally, fill up that one and two there. So, so, yes, what we are saying is that we are in a very delusive state because we have not been aware of ourselves, we have not been, you know, uh, trying to verify you know, what is coming from where and whether it is worth for us, whether it is not worth for me. Now we are trying to do this, we are trying to do that. So this delusion in the self is because of the ignorance, because of <coughs> my not being aware of myself, right? not being you know aware and then exploring you know, as to whether what is coming from outside is going to make sense to me or not. So we have not done that, but now we can do it. So when we do it, we can explore into our natural acceptance. And then we can make sure that our desire, thought and expectations are falling in line with our natural activities. <coughs> that is what we are doing. And you can see it is not something, you know, very exclusive for few, for few <coughs> people to do it. But everyone can do it for <coughs> And you don't need any qualification. What do you do? People sitting, 100 people sitting here. What this process we have started in the last four days, does it need any qualification? No. <coughs> anybody can do it. And anybody and everybody has to do it. So in that sense it can become the part of education and sense. not something, you know, very exclusive, something which only few people can do it, or something very high. Mm -hmm. something very natural for every human being to do it, and every human being can do it. What do you think? All of you sitting here, you think you can do this self-exploration? And understand about your own self, or is it not possible for you to do it? After at least 40, 50, 50, 50. <laughs> after 50 uh, further exploration, uh, when we come to the discussions of the self, uh, I don't agree with, with my due respect to your findings. Uh, it's much more, I feel, that there are much more deeper levels that we have to explore for the self. So, uh, at a human level, for the course of this, uh, this type of a course, uh, we 
can see that the explosion of the self at the coexistence level. But uh, going at a much deeper level, uh, the self is not existent. It is a relative truth. So, self existence. So, we can, uh, I think, very politely, I would like to see that. Uh, let us, for myself, let me uh, say that we will agree to our disagreement on the concept of the I, that is self. And uh, maybe that if we require some more discussions, because then I am afraid that a lot of the time is being consumed for discussions of this I self. And uh, for me, the natural acceptance itself is a precondition. You know, the moment you say that the natural acceptance means who is accepting? The self is existing. So that means you are determining so strongly the existence of the self, while in reality the self-existence is all created, all with the forms and different forms. So, <coughs> I would submit with a due respect to all the Gurus that I don't agree with the existence of the self, the way that you have explained here. But for a human value, to develop a human value, to introspect ourselves at a human uh, level, I think the method that we have come up is uh, excellent, extraordinary. This gives a lot of values, it makes a lot of sense, there are values. But when we come to the uh, you know, question of the self, then with my due respect that I don't agree with this. So let me come very politely that we will agree to our disagreement. Yeah, in fact, we are not expecting the agreement. We are only expecting the exploration. <laughs> so, we need to explore into ourselves. See whether we are there or not there. Okay. Whether I am real or I am not real. All this exploration has to be made. Right. So it's not the issue of agreement. That's what I have said. Do not assume it to be true. Very first day. Verify. Okay. Verify whether you are there or not there. Explore it to yourself and find out. If you are there, you are real and real. All this has to be looked into, each one of us, by our own self. <coughs> Only when you are able to see it, that you will accept. Otherwise, do not accept it. So, the agreement is not the issue. Okay. So, first day only I have said, you don't assume it to be true. These are just the proposal. Look into yourself. Find out. Right. Whether you are there, you are not there. If you are there, what is your real nature? What is your deliberate nature? Okay. All this you have to find out. And if at the end of all this exploration, you find that you are not there, right? I have no problem. So, that you have to find out for yourself. And for everything that is being said here, you know, you have to explore, investigate, and find out. So all that exploration has to be done. Um, my question is, uh, before I ask my question, I apologize if my question is not related. No, no, don't um, apologize. <laughs> you have a doubt and that's it. You know, you can ask. The fact that it is doubt, <coughs> okay, you don't need any qualification for that. Uh, if you have to answer something, then you need qualify, you know, some qualification. Uh, my question is that, Putinist uh, activities are all guided by the principles of cross-national happiness. Uh, and in the recent time, uh, the Bhutan government has made a government level attempt for the Palestinian deal, which our group, me as a group leader, are doing our research on that. And When doing the research, we don't have any doubt on the intention of both parties, uh, not the public, uh, nor the government also. But uh, after 
an implementation uh, a big things to be unhappy or uh, there is a contradiction. So we can sense the gap of contradiction in the attempt made by the government. So um, we can find where is the gap of contradiction? I like in the side of government. What is that sentence you said? The gap of contradiction. Yeah, 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 so um, either it's in the side of government or in the part of public. So if it is anywhere else, what well, we should do to fill that gap? You see, uh, I mean, all these issues have to be seen, you know, now, once we have we developed this perspective, we will see you know, how these issues will have to be looked at. For example, the six days when they have free to move with the vehicle, what do you think? Are they happy? <laughs> so, by making you know them this facility available even on the seventh day, okay, is not going to make them happy. They will have some other concerns, <coughs> right? Because the unhappiness is there. So we have come to assume that if you travel in a vehicle, you will become happy. Right? That is not going to happen. What is going to happen is that if you travel by a vehicle, you can move faster than your body can. So you can go from one place to the other place. <coughs> that is all that is going to take place. That equating it with happiness is what is creating problem, right? So those people who have vehicle and move all seven days, or people who have planes right, to move because the vehicles are very slow, okay, are they becoming happy? <coughs> People who do not have vehicle, they think that if they get vehicle, they will be over, they will become happy. <laughs> People who have vehicle, right, they are tired of traveling by vehicle. Every day they have to travel for six hours, you know. Like if you take it in Delhi, I don't know what is the situation here. In Delhi, almost everybody has a car. And if you see between 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, you know, in the morning, Almost everybody is going by a car with a single person sitting as driver, you know, himself. And it's one of the real travel something to do because every day they have to travel two hours going and two hours coming. So that's the most tiring activity for them. Right. Now we think that by making this facility available, they will become happy. Then we think that, no, no, if you are not making this facility available, they are becoming unhappy. So seven days, you know, all seven days they should have the freedom to move with the vehicle and they will become happy. <coughs> what I am saying, they will not become happy. Right? So, there is no direct correlation with your happiness. And you have presumed that there is a correlation. So even if you allow them for seven days, they will remain unhappy. If you allow them only for six days, they will be unhappy. Right? If you don't allow at all, they will be unhappy. Right? Then what is the issue? That has to be found out right? for happiness. <coughs> so all these you know, studies we are doing, there is some basic underlying you know, fallacy in it. And then we have discussed you know, the very... Uh, First, when we were talking about this dealing with animal consciousness and human consciousness, I said, if you have lack of physical facility, right, you feel uncomfortable and unhappy. But if you have physical facility, you forget about it. That does not become the source of happiness for you. That we studied, right? Is that true? Not true. If that is true, 
then it will really immaterial whether you are moving in a vehicle or seven days or six days. Your unhappiness is a part of your being. Right? That is lack of your right understanding and right feeling. <coughs> With that lack of right understanding and right feeling, you move in a vehicle.